Welcome back to our last one in the Latin squares and blocking designs. Um, if you're watching this right before the midterm, you might want to not watch this video until after you've taken the midterm. It's a little bit dense and I don't want you to get totally confused. So definitely um, watch this one after you finish the midterm and after you've seen the other two videos, maybe give yourself a day break on this one. Because um, it's going to get pretty complicated. We're going to get into what the advantages are. What I really want you to focus on is actually just kind of understanding what the relationship is and how you would actually calculate the relative efficiency and what it is, not so much on you know the super theoretical details on it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with that one. I just gave you that warning. So this is ran com basically comparing a randomized control block to the control randomized block. And the same thing applies to Latin squares and other types of uh, control block type experiments in different areas. So when we looked at a randomized control block, we had a variance and it was equal to, you know, the sum of the squares of the block. Right, this is the sum of the squares due to the block. And this was the sum of the squares due to the error. And we had our degrees of freedom of our randomized control design it was the number of blocks minus one times the number of treatments. And for a, that's just because we could, this is just basically randomly choose the assignment. And that's where that comes from. Randomized control block, however, we are restricting it. Restricting assignment. And what happens is we actually cut the variance down a little bit, right? So now instead, we don't we focus on the actual it just the error is now associated with this one. We don't have to worry about the blocking anymore because it's not being totaled up into it. And we actually now can split this up and independently pick about the treatments versus the block. So things kind of change a little bit here. And so what we want to do is we can look at a calculation for relative efficiency. And it's basically just comparing the two ideas. And what you look at is the degrees of freedom and the degrees of freedom for the randomized control block and the degrees of freedom for the con for the controlled randomized design. And we multiply by the relationship. This is a ratio of variances. As well as modified by a degree of freedom relationship. And what I want you to do is, this is the calculation. I'm not too worried about why this comes from me. Don't worry about where it derives it from. That's way beyond the scope. So derivation is beyond scope of class. Don't worry about that. I want you to interpret it. That's This is the most important stuff. It's basically the number of experimental units to collect in a controlled random, de random design with heterogeneous units in order to have the variances for the treatment means equal to that achieved by the randomized control block. So basically, in other words, how many more experiments do I need to run if I did not, if I did not restrict things? I didn't do the blocks. How many more experiments would I have to run? So what was my advantage? What was my efficiency of by choosing to block things ahead of time? How many less experiments do I have? Because less experiments equals less money equals saving money, which was our goal. Right? That's the whole goal, right? That's why we design experiments, to try to save money, save time. In this case, this is a relative efficiency. By choosing to make that restriction on the block, we can actually calculate how much better or how many less, how many more experiments I would have had to done if I had not actually done this. So let's do an example. So an example, I blocked it by car this time. Here's my oil type, right? I expect that that value would be pretty high, right? This was my block. Oh, let's get the right colors here. This was my block. This one was my treatment. And it's a no, it doesn't know any difference, right? This is my error. And I can say right now, with it blocked, I now know my oil type is important. Right? But look at what the difference was I had there, right? So I really, really tight that I was going to have that happen. 
If I didn't block by car, right, this is the control, completely randomized design. This was a randomized control block because I blocked it. If I didn't, notice what happens, right? All the variants, variants due to car type shadowed the effect or variance due to the oil type. So if I had not blocked it, I would get a completely different, no blocking, I would have made a different conclusion. For same number of experiments. Right, so this shows you the power of why blocking would make a big difference, right? If I blocked it, I get to pull some of that out and actually can split that up, right? I haven't changed this. It's just splitting it up, right? So good. So notice what happened, right? There's nine degrees of freedom here, 36 there. When I de-block it, it's got all of them go into the air instead, right? And so it throws off the denominator, throws off all kinds of crazy stuff, right? So that's what really causes my p-value to go down. So notice... All this variance due to the car type gets pushed into the residuals, which now makes the denominator bigger, which causes my F values to go significantly down. Notice the oil type line, right? So this is one thing to really pay attention. This line, these two parts didn't change. This and this are exactly the same, but the F value changed significantly, right? This part versus this part changed quite significantly because the denominator changed a lot because we did not pull out the stuff from this residuals that was due to the car type in this one. We did in this one, but we didn't remove it from this one. So that's why blocking is really important. So what's the relative efficiency in this? So if I did the calculations, I could pull out those, those bits that I need for this. Now I just, this is just a calculation example what's going on at this point I actually end up calculating a relative efficiency of 5.24 right. so that means I would need to do almost five times more exper experiments to get the good result that would actually show me the same results as if I did from control block right so that's an expensive 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 proposition right so in this case blocking reduced the variance of experimental units by 80 percent also known as looking at, we would require about five times as many trials to have an equivalent treatment means if each card had only been used for one trial and the card to card available had not been removed. So that would have cost you quite a bit. So the interpretation on this is getting a relative efficiency of 5.24 means that I would have to run my completely randomized design five times more in order to actually get this almost the same conclusion from a randomized control block if I had actually done it ahead of time. So this is showing you the power of randomized control blocks and how to actually calculate that efficiency, right? It'll take a little bit to digest this one. It is a kind of a calculational kind of disaster. I'm more important that you understand how to interpret the output, what a re relative efficiency is rather than the actual derivation about where this comes from. But really it just gives you a sign of how much better it is to do randomized control blocks versus just doing a completely randomized design and just assigning with no restrictions, right? So again, Take a little bit of time on that one and we'll talk about it later. But again, the only new tool we've added, we've just done ANOVAs. We still did ANOVAs, we haven't added any new analytical tools. We've got one new equation about relative efficiency, but like I said before, we're gonna stay in this little world of ANOVAs and linear regressions for pretty much the rest of the term. We're just gonna look at different ways to use them. All right, have fun and we'll talk about it during session. Thanks, bye.